All right, Dr. Rob, uh, I wanted to ask you if you saw this recent study that came out. It was about a Morse taper um, and bacteria. And I, wanted, I didn't know if you had seen it yet. If not, I can, I can read you a little bit and get your fresh reaction. Uh, I've seen a number of reports on Morse taper, but uh, maybe you should uh, read a couple of lines from the conclusion there and we'll see what we're, what we're working with. I'll skip ahead to kind of the, the conclusion here. Um, and what we've got is that the mechanical cycling resulted in mechanical sealing of the implant abutment interface, preventing bacterial infiltration in the indexed and non-indexed specimens and increasing the detorque strength in the group of indexed abutments. Now, how does that uh, make you feel? Is that a surprise? Is that exactly what you expected? How do you feel about that Morse taper? I would say that's 100% not a surprise. And, and the reason is, is that Morse taper, Morse taper was Morse was an engineer, okay? And they, when he created the taper, it's a mechanical device that we use. It's in most of our cars. Many of our axles and bearings are actually pressed onto the shaft through Morse taper, and it's a press fit. And, and if you don't, if it's not making sense to you, it's the red solo cup, okay? So when you go to the party and you grab the upside down red solo cup, oftentimes you get two. And then you have to kind of pick at one and then kind of bend it a little bit and get it to come apart. That's a Morse taper. Okay, so having a having a Morse taper is a way to take two tapered products, uh, products so, or parts, and slide them together, and ultimately end up with a very tight fit. The same thing happens in your garage. So if you have two conical trash cans and you've ever put one inside the other, sometimes you can't get them apart. You say, "Hey kids, come here, grab grab the bottom of this trash can." You're pulling and you're pulling and you're shaking your kids to death. You can't get these things apart. And if you don't know where that, think about your buckets. If you sometimes you put two buckets together and you can't get the, the buckets apart, that's a Morse taper. And once you get that seal, you know you can't get you can't get it apart. You can't get water, air. You can't get anything in there. It's a great it's a great concept. And the vast preponderance of dental implants have moved to a conical seal. Now, here's where things get a little fun. I don't believe that you have to have a deep Morse taper in order to accomplish the mechanical and the biological response. So bear with me here. I believe a shallow conical seal will result in the same outcomes. A stable mechanical interface that doesn't gap when you try to, sh when you try to shift it from occlusal forces and a, and a hermetic seal so nothing, gets, nothing infiltrates in or out. And the reason is at the same buffet that you went to where you picked up the red soil of the cup, there is a stack of paper plates. No, better yet, the plastic ones, the plastic ones, upside down. How easy is it for you to get that one? If I said grab one plate and slide it to the left or right, would it, it would slide the whole bunch, wouldn't, wouldn't it? It would slide the whole bunch off the table. It wouldn't just take one. So the only way to get that shallow more that shallow plate off is to grab it if you can get sticky fingers and try to pull it straight up. But oftentimes, when you pick up the plastic plates, you get multiple plastic plates, don't you? Or even the paper ones. You go, oh, I got, I got a couple of plastic or paper plates, and you have to take your fingernails and get in between them and break them apart, right? Oh, yeah. If you just clipped your fingernails, it's over. Yeah, it's over. You, you got you to gotta call your girlfriend and say, hey, I need help with my, my, my plate. I'm hungry, right? And so people... Th th that's the same concept. You can't get the red solo cup apart, but you can't get the paper plates apart either. And so what I'm saying here is that the paper plates have a shallow, shallow taper to them. And the, the red solo cup obviously has a deep taper to them. So I believe that a shallow taper will create the hermetic seal, just like the paper plate does, and a mechanical interface that doesn't gap. It just doesn't gap. Now, there's a little extra hidden thing in the dental implant world that a lot of people don't know about. And that is, is that if you're going to run with a deep Morse taper on a dental implant, that deep Morse taper has to go inside the implant to a, to a fair degree. Let's call it three millimeters. So where that taper, where the abutment goes in, is taking up space. And the space that it takes up means that oftentimes, with some of the original deep Morse taper solutions, the wall of the implant is thin. And because it's thin, they can't put any threads in that region. So towards the crest of the implant, you can't put any threads. So what the implant companies have done, if you just look to almost all of them, is they put little micro threads up there. 
Some are some are ring shanks, some are uh, blossom looking, some are actually just different threads. The problem that I have with that is that those threads are not the same pitch as the major threads. The depth isn't the depth isn't the same, which I'm okay with, but the pitch is different. And what that means is is that when you put that implant into the bone, uh, the major threads are engaging. The implant is sinking into the bone, and then in, let's call it a healed site. And then at the very, very end, those micro threads start to engage the bone, but they're not on the same path that was started by the major threads. So what happens to the bone? It gets it's just stripped out. It gets stripped out. It gets destroyed. It gets compressed or or smushed into the surrounding bone or whatever. But that doesn't seem like a reasonable solution to me. What I would prefer is a company that designs an implant where the major threads run all the way up to the top, all the way to the top, as, as, as high up to the crest of the platform of the implant as possible. And in order to do that, you got to have volume of space. You got to have space in the wall. And to have space in the wall, it's difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult to do that with a deep Morris taper because the taper is taking up the space. So a nice compromise is to use a conical internal, an internal seal that gives you the hermetic seal and gives you the stability, but I don't believe you need the deep, the deepness of it. It doesn't make sense to me that you need the deepness of it in order for that to give you the benefits. So you imagine if you had a red solo cup and you just you could just squish it down and make it short, you still would have a hard time getting them out. In fact, you know the little clear plastic uh, cups that look like low balls at the Christmas party that are usually beside the eggnog? Those stick together too. But they're half the depth. They're half the depth of a red solo cup. So here you have cups that are half the size of a red solo cup, and they stick together too, the, all the way down to a paper plate that has a very, very shallow lip, but sticks together. So if they're sticking together, they're sticking together, I'm happy with that. And there's some significant complications, predominantly with the older designs. But as we go forward, hopefully, if people are sticking with the deep Morse taper, they're going to redesign those in a way where they can make those walls thicker. And, and the main reason is, is that if at any point the Morris taper comes a little bit loose, that wall will fracture. If the Morris taper doesn't become loose, it will likely last forever, okay? The problem is if it loosens just a little bit, then what will happen is that little thin wall will be subject to a bending moment and then boom, you got a problem. So that's where, that's where the real problem comes from. Well, thanks for breaking that down for us. Absolutely, anytime. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, out.